resolved. Because, for example, Dr. Albright opened up by telling us this thing will be around probably in November, along with the flu season. That's great news. Uh, you know, the flu is already a mess. And then when you throw COVID on top of it, that's, right. you know, icky. But so and look at how much time that we have been in a shelter in place mode. So we're conceivably looking at in the spring of 2021 before things may settle down, depending on if there is a vaccine and if people uh, are not losing their minds and, and like crowding in and so forth and so on. So that's why I was throwing that to the panel, brother, brother Phillips. Well, let me just jump in. Um, I think if, uh, you know, certainly short term, uh, as the doctor, as Dr. Albright points out, uh, this is going to be with us and we're going to be uh, maneuvering our way and exploring, tiptoeing. We're going to be creating the road as we go because this is all new territory. There is no road and we're going to create it as we walk. Uh, that said, if things are that bad, I'll just use myself as an illustration. All of Hollywood is shut down. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. not working. There are no shows in production plays nothing there's nothing for me to do to make money uh, in my profession i also teach uh to make ends meet well schools are closed down mm -hmm. universities are closed now mm -hmm. so if if i was a potential member of alpha phi alpha fraternity incorporated i think the last thing on my mind would be joining the fraternity <laughs> when i have rent to pay and, and if the pandemic continues and, mm -hmm. and society is, is, con is wrapped up and it's, we're social distancing and wearing masks and all of this thing, and if that's the way it is, frankly, I don't think that, I mean, I think we have deeper problems uh, than people joining our organization. And I think that, that, mm -hmm. that, that the numbers would be low anyway. Mm -hmm. That said, I want to make this point because I want to throw this out here, because I think that we have a much greater issue, which is what do we do with the organization, not in terms of bringing new members in, but how do we maintain our own sense of brotherhood and camaraderie? You know, I pointed this out at the uh, thing last week, the, the, mm -hmm. the Western Regional get-together, sure. virtual get-together. Uh, as we were planning, and brothers were on, on the Facebook page talking about coming to the Western Regional Convention, I jokingly asked, so brothers gripping each other or no? That's right. And the I number of that. brothers who said, I'm not gripping anybody. That's right. That was shocking to me. And I began to, in my own mind, begin to ask, so now what happens to our organization where brothers do not greet each other? We don't enter into... Uh, the House of Alpha and, and exit friends and et cetera, et cetera. Brothers won't grip. Brothers don't want to stand next to each other. And as a society, social distancing means we have a distant society. And society is not set up to work that way, quite frankly. People need other people. They want closeness, touch. They want to be in groups and have contact with other human beings. That is our nature. And, and well, I don't want to get too far down that road. I don't happen to think that government has the capacity other than with armed representatives to keep us from our nature. And I think we saw that in Orange County this week. People saying, enough, enough. I have to congregate. I have to be around other people. But anyway, that's that's beside the point. I just throwing that out there. What happens to our organization if we can't meet and grip? Forget about bringing new people in. What happens to the, the, the current body uh, if this continues? Well, may I comment? Sure, go that. My, my comment would be that we're doing it today. And from what I've seen in the virtual meetings I've been a part of, like I said, we had a Kappa Happy Hour. And we had 64 brothers on the line and we were saying, man, it's good to see you again. It's good to, to be able to talk to my brothers and see them. I can't touch you, but I, I'm with you. And so I think that that's going to be sort of the new normal. I look at the 
the travel and the commuting and all those things that were a part of our lives that I, I imagine if you had asked some of us, could you survive at home for two months without going, oh, no, I couldn't do it. I've been doing it, and I'm in touch with my mother, my brother, my sister. We're doing virtual Zoom chats. So, I mean, I'm not physically touching them, but and, and I think some of the experts are saying that even though we may not be physically in contact, that doesn't mean we have to be away from each other. And so I'm looking at you all, and we're having a meeting, and I don't, I think maybe because of the science, I don't know, maybe I have a sort of a different uh, perspective. But like you said, the people in Atlanta going out there and going to the parks and congregating, I mean, you can choose death over life. You know, if you want to go out there, take that mask off and those gloves off and go to the party, you know, go out there and be with your people if, that, if you don't think that COVID is real and 70,000 people have perished. And, and if you want to, if you're so anxious to get out there and hug your brother and sister, go ahead and just regard, disregard what's happening in the whole world, because that's the kind of attitude, in my opinion, that's got us in such a bad way. So, I mean, I think we had, may need to rethink our behavior and how we used to do things because it's deadly. And I mean, I don't even have to go into any of the, you know, the, the proof of what I'm talking about. So we may need to rethink it because what we're doing now is not going to work. And we're going to see, you know, what happened right after the Mardi Gras. And let's just go back to the ballparks and the basketball arenas and let's go to the football stadiums. Let's junk all this. It's, COVID is not real. Let's go back face to face and hug and touch one another and see where that gets us. That's wow. my concern just as a health care professional. And I appreciate that, Dr. Albright, but just to be fair, uh, there was nothing in that anything I said that questioned whether or not COVID was real. My question brother, really brother, had to do what you with... Did say, what you did say is you felt such a strong need to grip your brothers and hug your brothers that that would lead you back. And you gave an example how people defied the science and what's happening that's and not went what back. I said. Let, well, that's if that's what you heard, let me let me just okay. say it a different way. Let me oh. say it a different way. What I was saying is uh, what I believe to be human nature. My question was, how does that affect uh, the long-term health of our organizations? And it may be true that in the short term that meeting people online gives us a sense of closeness. My contention is that that is... Uh, Un, it's it's uh, plastic, and it is not a substitute for the real life connection that human beings desire with one another, and that fuels uh, organizations like ours, fraternities and sororities, which are not about just being in touch virtually with one another. It's about being uh, with one another in the presence of one another, doing work with one another, but brotherhood uh, uh, and sisterhood um, in the flesh. And so my question is not, is COVID real? The question is, in this age, what does this, and if you call it the new normal, how does this impact the life, the blood, uh, uh, the the spirit of these organizations. Well, my, my response to that would be that we will learn and we will adapt to doing things differently. We've already done so. Now, it won't be the same, just like we were talking, Mike and I were talking earlier. There are some brothers who went through the fire and they don't think that somebody who's going through the graduate chapter you know, is a real alpha or a real kappa. So I get that. And I know that, that that ritual that we went through was very real and very, you know, at the time it seemed like the right thing to do. But I'm just thinking that maybe with, now I don't know about alphas, but I know that membership in a lot of the universities is down. You know, like in the Riverside, University of California, Riverside, there's like three kappas on campus. 
and none of the other fraternities, the alphas, or got kicked off and Q's got kicked off. So our numbers are dwindling so that at Riverside Alumni Chapter is bringing in a, the vast majority of Kappas in our area. And we're they're not going through the rituals that we went through. And we're getting some really, really good brothers who have finished school, who are now working, who really can provide important input into the chapter. You know, they're coming in to experience doctors, lawyers, whatever. Um, we get we got a few kids who come in, you know, in right out of college or whatever. And, you know, they really need maturity and some time before they contribute. So I'm just saying that if the college campuses, and also you might be aware that many of the African-American, the HBCUs are in severe financial trouble. And that's where we get most of our membership. So, you know, with all these things happening, we may need to look ahead and say, well, we aren't getting the younger brothers out of undergrad. Maybe we should, you know, adjust to this virtual thing. And I wonder how much our meeting uh, participation would be if I could sit down here and instead of driving 40 miles to my meeting, I could do it from my living room. I wonder what that would do to the number of meetings I participated in the year. Well, I can tell you I'd be present a lot more because life wouldn't really necessarily get in the way as much. So I think that, I mean, I know this is a severe departure. I know that. And I mean, I've been a capital almost 50 years. So, you know, I've been through a lot of, you know, turns and twists. But I'm saying that what I've seen over the years is like I, we didn't have as many as the, the, the president of Delta, but we had, you know, 20 guys online. And now these guys got two people, you know, maybe three. One's graduating. So I think that if we look at that realistically, we may need to be looking for some new ways to recruit and to build our membership that may not be from undergraduate level. And I think the virtual world is one way to do that. We could invite, you could invite an alpha who hasn't been active in 10 years and say, click onto the website and join our meeting. And he comes in and, whoa, look at this, Mike. Hey, Mike, blow, I've been seeing you in 10 years. And then he meets you again and it's like, hey, man, he says, I'm back in. How easy would that do virtually rather than try to find him and bring him to a meeting. See, there's a lot of ways that this may be beneficial to us. And I'm not saying get rid of the old system, but I'm saying that we may be transitioning. And I think that's something we ought to be preparing for, or at least very aware of. So if what we've been doing is not working, we have something to, to go to. Well, I'm happy to see that, uh, to hear that Dr. Albright agreed with me on something because he just made, he just made the point that I made before I took the break. So right on, Dr. Albright. All right, man. We have some common ground. <laughs> excellent, excellent. I think it. I think it works. It works well. I mean, the, you know, part of the part of the thing that we all have is that we we have our we've been in the organization for some years. So we understand what it's like to to have that. You know, some of the other folks coming in may not know that. So in their minds, you know, thinking that they're a, a part of this historical thing. Now, granted, it's much more than than what they can imagine. But um, we the, again, the conversation is rich and full because it is forcing us to think differently. And it's, it's the same kind of thinking, I think, that, you know, that brought all of our organizations into existence in the, place, yeah. in the first place like you know because going through my mind you know uh talking to a friend of mine they said well, what would the what would the founders want you to do what would the founders say about <laughs> of course we wouldn't we don't know but it's something to ponder and, sure. and i'm sure they had great uh you know they had issues that were um probably seem almost as insurmountable as this that they had to push through to even Our bring ours, bring yeah. out organizations organizations uh to it to existence but um, but there is something to be said about, you know, human touch. But all at the same time, you, you know, to Brother Phillips's point, you know, what can we do now? What, what do we do differently? How do we pull in and nurture those those brothers, those sisters who are already in? How do we pull people together? You know, I just recently got my uh, uh, directory 
you know, big old thick Bible directories. 